Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video guys, we are gonna be painting a leopard. This is a black and gray scale portrait again. A little bit of color in the eye on this one. Dark background, this leopard's laying on a rock coming over there. So that's what we're painting today guys. This video is gonna be in a three part series on this one because this is a big image. I've got a full picture to do on this. I've projected this up already, so I've got a faint outline of what to work from. So I'm going to take you along three videos on this airbrush tutorial. We've got all the paint set up. We've got the grayscale value finder if we need to find any values. I've got most of the values pre-mixed. The airbrush that we're going to be using today is going to be the PS771 by Grios Mr. Hobby and we'll be using the PS270, and that's another Griot's by Mr. Hobby as well, guys. So, our drop-in time lapses, like me on the videos, and then I'll give you little talk-throughs on tips and tricks, and things that I'm doing on this process of this leopard in this video, guys. So, stay tuned, I'll drop you in a time-lapse. See you later. Right guys, I'll give you a little talk through on that short time lapse. The first tone that I've gone in with, we've start, we're starting on the front part of the face on the leopard and we're gonna start working back. I started out with the value eight, which is on the grayscale, that's really light. And I basically looked at the image and I'm just following the fur textures, just doing little tiny little squiggle lines and following the way that the fur's going with that tone. So that's the first tone that I dropped in. And then I went in and put the eye in. I started out on the eye with the yellow. That's the yellow that I'm using. Went in really light with that yellow. Just dropped the yellow in all around the eye. And then looked at the reference and then went in with the yellow oxide and done the yellow oxide just where it sort of like oranges up a bit on top of that yellow and that gave me that color around I went in with a shading gray and went round the eye on the dark bits with the shading gray and the shield just to sharpen up them bits around the eye and then went in with the carbon black and then blacked out where the real darks are and the center where the pupil part is darkened all that out and then highlights paint pen bang straight in nice and sharp I'll drop them on again because this is for normal paper, your paints tend to draw into it and then dry. So you just gotta go over the top again and pinpoint your highlights and just whiten them up again. Like that. And that'll just sharpen them up where you need them to go. So that's where we are, guys. I've just started dropping some of the black with the pattern in a lot of this on the screen, you've got a lot of darks around these, but I'm not too fussed about if I have to go like a, a dark gray, if I drop a dark gray feathered in around these spots, it's gonna go jet black again, so I can black over the top again, and you'll get like a little fade out around each one of these, and that's what I'm after. So I'm gonna keep working this front in, 
we'll get this piece in and then I'll aim to get that in here and this darkened out here in the first video and then we'll move on in stages this one will be like part two and then part three the back end with the stone effect in so I'll drop you on another time lapse they're the bits that I've been using I've used the PS2771 air pressure I've regulated it I've got 20 psi coming in on the line and then if I need to tone it down I'm just dialing it in on the little mac valve at the front and dropping that down all goes on the paint consistency that you're using if you're a little bit thicker paints a little bit more air pressure if you're thinning down drop that pressure down and you'll soon know get yourself a little test piece of panel and when you spray if, you, if your spray pressure is too high and your paint's too thin you'll instantly spider web it and it'll blow out so then if it's doing that just start toning your pressure down until you get it until you're hitting a spot that isn't spidering out and you'll be good to go so that's how i work my paints out cleaning wise i'm just flushing through with a bit of water if it gets a bit cloggy, pull the needle back, drop a little bit of thinners in, blast it through, back flush it a couple of times by pinching the needle, empty it out, and then I've got two toothbrushes put together, tip dry, little bit of water on it, and just rub the tip of the airbrush along the toothbrush bristles, and that you're good to go. You, you can clean and just keep doing that as you go along. Always clean your brush, especially if you're doing something detailed like an eye, Make sure you tip, look at it nice and clean so when you go in your paints flow really nice and you'll get them accurate points where you need to go. So that's me babbled on enough. I will drop you on another time lapse and we'll crack on with this leopard guys. See you in a bit.
Right guys, I'm gonna give you a talk through. This is the first part of the video. We've got to here. And then we're gonna move on in part two. We'll move on down the body and we'll keep moving on. So I'll talk you through what we've done in them time lapses, paints that I've used. So I first went off with a value eight. So on the actual scale, a value eight is quite light, sort of about here. And I went around and just started doing some line work and like following the shape sort of like fur pattern the best I can get it with this paper. So evaluate first, then we drop down to a six. Same again, going over bits with a six. Went in with a four on that. Carbon black on the markings of the leopard. And I'm just hazing around them and just building up the tones. This looks all sort of patchy at the minute with the shapes and things, but we'll sharpen them up, we'll paint pen bits in. I've dropped the whiskers in. That was just a quick flick out with the paint pen. If I had synthetic papers, I could erase and get textures and knock the tones back that way. But I'm having to do this with the airbrush and try and get them effects by doing it with the airbrush on its own. And it's like quite tricky doing it that way. If you've got pencil erasers and scalpels and things you can really like scratch out and you can erase back and it just makes it easy then you can just drop the airbrush paint over the top knock that back again this weighs a lot harder on this paper but we'll get through it guys so we've gone to here everything's in up to there there'll be more to do but if i work it i'll work it to this level all the way through and as i'm going through in part two, I'll just start here, get this bit done, and then we'll tidy up bits on this, and we'll, we'll work it through, guys, we'll get there. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's not a long video. I hope you can join me in the next stage on the Leopard, and yeah, there'll be more tips and tricks, little things as we go along, we'll get this one complete, guys. So, I will see you a lot in part two. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, guys. Big welcome and thanks for the comments, all you new subscribers. It's great to get the comments and feedback on the channel, guys. I want to get this channel growing. It's all to help you guys that are interested in airbrushing. So yeah, I'll see you lot in the Leopard Part 2. Thanks for watching.